What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video. And in this video, you will learn about business continuity concepts such as fault tolerance and disaster recovery. Fault tolerance is the way in which an operating system responds to a hardware or software failure. The keys to fault tolerance in IT include replication and redundancy. So replication is the continuous copying of data changes from one device to another device. To make replication possible, many other factors must be taken into account, including hardware and data redundancy, backups, backup storage, and contingency planning. Redundancy, a full redundant system describes a component of a computer or network system that is used to guard the primary system from failure by acting as a backup system. Redundant components include or can include hardware, software and networks, which are designed to switch over automatically to the secondary components in case of a failure. So here are a few examples of how redundancy can be achieved. Data. So data redundancy is the existence of data that is additional to the actual data and permits correction of errors in stored or transmitted data. The additional data can simply be a complete copy of the actual data or only select pieces of data that allow detection of errors and reconstruction of lost or damaged data up to a certain level. Data redundancy can be achieved by using high availability databases, RAID arrays for storage, and backups. Some database apps include high availability, which is the ability to recover from a failure quickly, and they can use that as a configuration option. So for example, some editions of Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle support high availability options. RAID arrays, so that stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks, is a data storage virtualization technology that combines multiple physical disk drives, components, into one or more logical units for the purpose of data redundancy, performance improvement, or both. Despite the name, RAID 0, also known as stripping or striping, is not redundant storage. So RAID 0 treats two drives as a single logical unit by striping data continuously across both drives. This improves read-write performance, but if either drive fails, all data is lost. Actual uh, redundancy is available with all other RAID levels. The most common RAID levels are 1, 5, and 10. Our 10 is also known as 1 plus 0 when it comes to RAID. So some desktop computers and most servers have built-in RAID host adapters. RAID adapters can be added when necessary. So here is a screenshot describing the various RAID levels. You have RAID level 0, 1, 5, and 10. RAID 0 uses two drives and it stripes data, data on both drives. Um, RAID 1 uses two drives. The data is mirrored from one drive to another drive to where it is, uh, provides true redundancy. Uh, 5 uses three or more. The data and the parity information are striped across all drives. The array can be rebuilt if a single drive fails, but performance suffers due to the rebuild process. And then you have RAID 10 or RAID 1 plus 0. It uses four drives. Two pairs of drives have been striped, have, have data striped across them, but each pair of drives is also mirrored. So software RAID is supported by most operating systems that do not have RAID compatible host adapters. Software RAID supports the same type of RAID arrays as hardware RAID. Real-time data redundancy for any type of data can be achieved using RAID 1, 5, or 10 storage arrays. However, RAID is not a, sub a substitute for backups. Depending upon how backups are created, Backup files can be used immediately or might need to be restored before use. Network. Network redundancy is a process through which additional or alternate instances of network devices, equipment, and communication mediums are installed within network infrastructure. 
It is a method for ensuring network availability in case of a network device or path failure and unavailability. Network redundancy is designed to help businesses achieve 99.999% or the five nines network reliability, meaning minimal downtime and maximum availability. Five nines is also the goal of high availability, availability databases. Power. A redundant power supply is when a single piece of a computer equipment operates using two or more physical supplies. Each of the power supplies will have the capacity to run, run the device on its own, which will allow it to operate even if one goes down. Most redundant power supplies are designed for rack mounted use to provide replacement power for a particular device in the event of an AC power failure connected to a battery backup unit, which is also known as an UPS or uninterruptible power supply to provide redundant power protection against the failure of the electrical service to a location, use a backup standby generator. Backup consideration. So when hardware fails, you can purchase replacements, but when storage devices fail, the data is lost unless you have backup copies, a backup copy, uh, a backup is a copy of information stored on a computing device, such as a laptop, desktop, server, or mobile device. A backup can be restored in the event of a data loss. A backup copy of information on a system can be used by the system in case the original is lost or corrupted. There are many backup methods designed for different purposes. The following sections, we're going to talk about some of those methods. So, Types of data backup. So there are three different types of data backups. You have a full backup that backs up all files, whether they are backed up previously or not. When the file is backed up, a file attribute known as the archive bit is changed to indicate the file has been backed up. You have a differential backup. It backs up all files changed since the last full backup. And then you have an incremental backup. It backs up only the files changed since the last full or incremental backup. A differential backup and an incremental backup are two different methods for backing up only changed files. If incremental backups are used between full backups in the event that a full restoration is needed, the last full backup and all incremental backups must be restored. However, if differential backups are used between full backups, only the last full backup and the last differential backup must be restored. All right, so data, the most fundamental backup concerns include what to back up and where to back the uh, where to store the backup. So the following section we're going to talk about uh, con address concerns when it comes to deciding what to back up. So we have file backups. A file backup is the practice of protecting important data by storing duplicate files on a different location on the same drive, on different drives or different computers and or different sites. Uh, this type of data can be backed up using several methods. You have file synchronization. That is when files are copied from the original location to a matching folder on another local or network storage device by an app that tracks additions, changes and deletions. You have file copying That's files are copied from the original location to another location by the operating systems built in copy commands. You have file history. That's when files are copied to another location in such a way that different versions of the same file can be restored when desired. And you have file backup with compression. Files are compressed into archives that are created on another location by a backup utility that might be provided with the operating system or a third party provider. Files must be retrieved by the backup utility. Depending on the utility, the files might need to be restored to the original location or another location before they can be used. The operating system tracks which files have been backed up so that they are not backed up again. We have critical data. Critical data is the data that is critical to success in a specific business area or data required to get the job done. It needs to be backed up and available more quickly than old or stale data. You can make access to your latest data easier in case of loss with the following steps. 
So you will move outdated information to a separate drive. You will use file synchronization and versioning on current folders only. And you would run periodic backups on current folders only. Database. A database backup is the process of backing up the operational state architecture and store data of database software. It enables the creation of a duplicate instance of, or copy of a database in case the primary database crashes, is corrupted or lost. You have operating system databases. These are, are backups, excuse me. These are uh, backups that enable a crash system to be returned to use quickly or migrated to new hardware. An operating system backup also includes installed apps, is usually created as an image backup, and often uses different backup software than file-oriented backups. Operating system backups are often known as disaster recovery backups. Location. So the following sections, we're going to compare and contrast backup storage locations. So stored locally. So backups that are stored locally can be restored immediately to local systems in the event of a file corruption, limited data loss or widespread data loss. However, if your organization uses mobile systems, locally stored backups might not be restorable until the mobile devices are back in the home office. Cloud storage. So cloud-based backups run continuously whenever a device is connected to the internet and devices that suffer data loss can restore a backup in the same way. Some backup vendors also offer the option of receiving backup files on a portable hard drive for faster restoration. Offsite, on-site versus off-site. So on-site backups can be accessed immediately for restoration to the on-site systems. However, in the event of a man-made or natural disaster of sorts, on-site backup files can be lost. Off-site backup files are stored away from the point of need, but must be delivered to the uh, device location for backup. Via a communication of on-site and off-site backup stores with local and cloud components, backups can provide both quick access and off-site security. Contingency plan. So some elements of a contingency plan in order to keep IT running in the event of any type of interruption should include the following. It should include quick access to back up the information, availability of replacement systems that can be used to continue business, email, website, and social media accounts that can be used to update current and potential customers of any changes in phone numbers or physical addresses during a crisis, rapid deployment of replacement IT hardware and software systems. Disaster recovery sites are sites where IT functions can be set up when a disaster prevents the use of the original site. These fall into three categories. You have a cold site. A cold site has power, HVAC, and network connections, but would need equipment and data before it could be used for IT functions. This is the least expensive to maintain before a disaster, but takes the longest time to set up during a disaster. You have a warm site. That is a site that has power, HVAC, network, and hardware suitable for IT functions. Um, the systems at the warm site might need to have operating systems, apps, and data restored, or operating systems and apps could already be installed to save time. A warm site costs more than a cold site and will require ongoing maintenance of hardware and possibly software but can be made ready in hours rather than days compared to a cold site. And then you have a hot site. So a hot site uh, in IT terms is a duplicate of your primary IT functions with hardware, apps, and data running, and data that is ready to run in minutes or less in the event of a disaster. This is the most expensive of the three disaster recovery plans, but for an organization that cannot afford downtime, it might be the only one that is worth considering. Disaster recovery. So that is a set of policies and procedures which focus on protecting an organization from any significant effects in case of a negative event due to man-made or natural disasters. From an IT standpoint, there are three parts to disaster recovery. You have data restoration, prioritization, and restoring access. So as you develop a disaster re uh, recovery and business continuity plan, Make sure you test and evaluate the policies and procedures that you create. 
Look for weaknesses and resource gaps and fix any problems you discover. Train personnel, making sure to clearly define each person's role and responsibilities to help improve performance, communication and coordination and to avoid panic. Make sure your plans and procedures meet legal and regulatory requirements. Data restoration. So data restoration is the process of salvaging inaccessible, lost, corrupted, damaged or formatted data from secondary storage, removable media or files when the data stored of them cannot be accessed in a normal way. What could be done in advance to make sure that the data can be restored as quickly as possible? Well, you can use the fastest local or network connections available for restoring backups. You can migrate backups on slower media to faster media, and you can restore only the data needed for current operations. The fastest local connection in general use for external drives is a USB 3.2 generation one or a USB 3.0, which runs at five gigabits per second. If any backups needed for immediate use are stored on older USB 2.0 drives, that data should be migrated to a USB 3.1 generation one drive before disaster. The fastest LAN connections in general use are gigabit Ethernet or 1000 megabits per second and wireless AC. Um, if data will be built, if data will be restored via LAN or WAN connections, USB 3.1 generation one adapters using these standards should be used to replace slower built in network adapters. Prioritization. So all data is deemed very important, but current data is more important than old data. And here are some useful rules to help prioritize data within your organization. Now, keep in mind, rules may vary by industry. First thing you want to do is define your key assets and restore them first. Next, you want to make sure you restore information that enables you to do current business before you restore historical information. And then you want to make sure the information you need first can be restored as quickly as possible. And then after you do all of that, you want to define your key assets and your key assets can include things such as customer or client information, accounting information, products and marketing plans, line of business information. And finally, restoring access. So a disaster recovery plan needs to be in place in order to restore vital services, not only to your company, but to that of your customers and potential customers as well. Services like telephone, Internet, email and social media connections need to be restored as soon as possible. All right. So that is our class. So let's go ahead and do some check on learning, shall we? First question. Which of the following provides data mirroring and striping uh, using four devices? Would it be RAID 4? Would it be RAID 10? Would it be RAID 0? Or would it be RAID 5? So it provides data mirroring and striping. Means Data mirroring essentially means it takes data from one drive and completely copies it to another drive. Striping means as data is being recorded, it's recording stuff on one drive, on drive A and drive B at the same time. So which one is the correct answer? The correct answer would be RAID 10 or RAID 1 plus 0. That is the correct RAID level. Next question. You are in charge of the IT disaster planning team for a retailer. Which of the following types of data is critical data? Would it be old catalog files? Would it be current orders? Would it be last year's inventory summary? Or would it be last quarter's promotion? So you are in charge of their disaster team for a retailer. Which is the most important information? Uh, the correct answer is current orders. Current orders is the most important information that you need to protect at all costs. All right. So final question. You are considering backup storage options. Which of the following is not a good option in case in the case of a robbery, fire, earthquake or some type of civil disturbance? Would it be a database? Would it be the cloud? Would it be offsite? Or would it be 
on site. So you're considering backup storage options. Which of the following is not a good option in the case of a robbery, fire, earthquake, or some type of civil disturbance? The correct answer would be on site. That means you are keeping the information on site or on premises, uh, quote unquote, next to you. So if an earthquake happens, there's a riot outside, a robbery or a fire, guess what? Somebody or Mother Nature can go in there and just damage all of your data. And now you are potentially SOL. All right. So in summary, we have talked about business continuity concepts such as fault tolerance and disaster recovery. If you want more information on this, please visit my website, technologyg.com, so you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass your CompTIA IT Fundamentals Certification Exam. And this video is the final video of my CompTIA IT Fundamentals Certification uh, course. If you want to get read up, please visit the website, like I stated earlier, or go to my YouTube channel, type in Technology G. Go to the section where it says playlist and playlist and you'll see all videos for this entire class. I believe it's like a grand total of like 34 videos, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, visit Technology G. And with that, I'll be making more videos on YouTube talking about some other stuff. So I'll see you guys later. Peace.